Okay. Hey friends, how you doing? This is mainly a video now for Ed, the owner of the 49 Chevrolet. Ed, howdy, happy new year. I've got Bridget here with me. She was instrumental today in helping me get your seat put in your car. And this is the seat from the 2003 Chevrolet truck. The front driver's seat, we're gonna do the same on the other side for the passenger seat and have that middle bench rumble seat. It's kind of like a center console thing. That's part of this whole thing. Now, I'm just gonna show Bridget here a little bit. This is Bridget, everybody, this is Bridget. I've known Bridget for many years. We've done a couple videos together, right, Bridget? Yeah. You know, you kind of, it's so, I'm so grateful to have Bridget here to help me do these kind of tasks because I, I can't do these things on my own. Uh, it's very difficult. So, Bridget, tell Ed and tell the people what we did today on your on the, the frame, the seat, and how what you did to help out. Uh, well, first we took the seat completely apart so we can get the frame to where it's extremely even with each other. And then we lined it up on the floor and in the proper space. So now it's lined up properly with your control panels and then soon to be where your gas pedal will go. Um, and then made sure it was good for a short person and a tall person. Um, so it's, it's good to go. Really? <laughs> so the seat was really gross when we got it and took it apart. We went down to the upholstery shop and Steve down there showed us how to pull this thing apart. So go ahead, Bridget, move your seat forward and back. It's all the way back? All the way back. Okay. Locked in now. Midway. Plenty of leg room. In. Now, tell them about these little brackets we just welded in. Those, are, of course, are not going to be permanent. Those are just placeholders to keep the to keep it level. To keep the seat level, and then each slider level with each other because you have to make sure the sliders are level with each other and level with your vehicle as well. Right. And having Bridget in the seat, literally in that seat today, was very instrumental now bridget go ahead and grab the wheel and go in like you're going to tilt it a little bit you're going to tilt it down okay now tell them tell bridget also what you what you were doing with re relationship between your eyes through the steering wheel into that you have to make sure that it's completely lined up so your body is centered centered with the steering wheel and then centered with your your, your speedometer, speedometer yeah. as well. So everything needs to make sure that it's centered, that way you're not over too far to either side, that way you're exactly in line where and, you're supposed to be. And you look normal. I mean, you're in the car. Semi-normal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're there ready to drive. And the steering wheel, now let's talk about the steering steering wheel, what we're gonna do on this. Um, yeah, we can see that pretty well. Go ahead, Bridget, and talk him through what I told you about earlier today with the lineup of this divot, and just, just explain it. So the the, sh the shaft of the steering wheel has to be in line with the center of the divot. We're gonna go ahead and get this fitted in just a little bit better, that way it's flush with it, and it has to be centered with your speedometer as well. So, so the, the whole column be... has to move up. Yep. The, um, the center axis of the column, where my finger is, is going to come up about what we measured at about two inches. So the whole steering wheel is going to go up. So it's, see how close it is to your knees? And that's about level, meaning the steering wheel is in the middle position of up and down. Go through the motion on the steering wheel, all the way up and then all the way down. Yep. So the steering wheel itself, the steering column, is going to go up into the dash because that right there is where the old steering column was. So we're gonna make that bigger. So the whole, so Bridget, when the steering wheel column is north two inches, meaning going up yeah. two inches, will you still be able to sit in your seat and look over the steering wheel or through the steering wheel oh, yeah. and see the gauges? Yeah, definitely. It'll actually be even easier to see your gauges through the steering wheel. And this top part will probably be in line with your top part for me, depending on where you Right. And how tall are you? 5'11". 
five, two and a half. Okay, now we even went down into the weeds to measure from Bridget's hip flexor, right about there, all the way down to her knee, and it was 15, was it? 15. 15 inches. Yep. And I was, I'm 19 inches. My measurement from here to there was 19 inches. So Ed, you're a little bit shorter than I, but you're not as short as, <laughs> <laughs> it was like, okay, Bridget, I'm, I, <laughs> okay, so Ed, I think, I think, I hope that this will be good for you in terms of seat adjustability. Now, remember this cushion, talk about that cushion for a minute, Bridget. This cushion is um, actually backwards, um, original to the seat, taken off of the seat backwards being leveled out with a piece of wood so yeah. I can kind of sit properly bucket seat how it should be because Bridget is <laughs> filling Ed, Bridget is filling that bucket seat part up with her butt <laughs> it's filling it in nicely so it's a perfect fitment you know we, we're, we're hitting we're cooking with Crisco today we're doing really well so um, let's look at the back Bridget I'm going to pull back a little bit now go ahead and move the seat forward some more there we go Okay, now Ed, let's talk about safety. Bridget, talk about the seatbelt. The seatbelt is actually going to be inside of your chair. So it's not going to be attached to your frame, it's going to be inside the chair. And then you're going to just, it's all connected to your chair, really. Remember we pulled, the, other, we the, pulled it all, all apart. All the wires and everything is in your chair. So you reach up with your left hand, pull that over your body, and you buckle it in. Those were all on the seat, Ed, and we pulled that off today. Yep. Now the steering wheel has got an airbag in it. Yes. Grab his other steering wheel and put it over the other one. Ed, here's your old steering wheel. It's a little bit bigger than the new one, but what, what did we talk about the collision stuff today? Not as safe, this is not gonna, this is, this is sturdy. This will definitely, uh, break your nose, hurt you. Right. This is a lot safer and a lot more road it's, it's meant to collapse. So we're trying to, we're trying to get the, well, not trying, we are installing the safety mechanisms inherent with the 2003 Chevrolet truck where that steering column came from. Now it looks gross now, but it was dirty and it will be clean. That'll all be nice and clean. The plastics, the, and it's even got the key in there, Bridget, right? Yes. See right over there? I have the key in here. Yep. The key there with the ignition and the shifter is right there with your conventional, okay? Which I'm, I'm going to try to utilize these parts because they are Chevrolet and it, 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 you know, the stuff works. Like Bridget, reach down there and grab that shaft, um, that long shaft. Oh. Yeah. That's the um, that's the U joint there. This is the steering column shaft. It's going to go on the other side of the firewall, down into the steering box. This thing right here. So we'll read. This came with this. Okay. Now let's talk about the gas pedal a little bit. Let's bring this down. Okay, Bridget. Now go ahead and put your foot where you think the gas pedal needs to go. Okay. Now we did this. We measured this. We we did the feet quote feel test Bridget's you know sitting in here driving and then she's moving her foot like it's you know for the gas so this here Ed is your um, the gas pedal assembly that came out of the 03 truck and it's got a sensor in it and this is what will run your vehicle so we found a place where it's going to go it's going to be bolted in here now, Bridget, let's talk about that gas pedal. What we're gonna do to that? We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take this metal here and we're gonna bend it. That way it fits exactly where it should go underneath your foot. Bend it and cut it. Because right now the gas pedal is too long. It's sticking way up too far from the floor. Hold that with your left foot. Yeah. You get it? Okay. So what Bridget was saying, this will take out of here or bend it or we'll take it out of here and bend it. I'm not quite sure yet, but what we want to do, Ed, is we want to bring your gas pedal 
your right foot, pick it up. We will, okay, no, put it back like you're running the gas. Okay, we wanna bring this gas pedal down in here in this relationship, but keep this in the same place because we have the extended new firewall under here. And remember that firewall we put in um, a while ago, so we don't wanna, we don't wanna change that. We wanna keep that as, as much as possible. So we'll have to, we'll have to make up the difference in the arm here. So now go ahead and move the gas pedal, Bridget, with your foot. Yep. The actual gas pedal itself, yeah. See, that's totally impractical <laughs> for a gas pedal to be there. So we're gonna modify that lever to go closer to the floor. That's good. That's good, I'm, I'm impressed. I think uh, we got a lot done in, in the brackets here. You know, Bridget dug out those little these little coupons, just some scrap metal, just to just to get the dimensional accuracy of the seat. And Bridget, what do we do to establish the the uh, levelness of the seat? <laughs> because my, go ahead, talk talk it through. We we didn't have the level here at the shop today. So the bubble, yeah. Is we use the um, piece of wood. Piece of wood, and then we put a. Uh, socket a socket on top to make sure either it wasn't rolling but it was rolling so we needed to make sure everything was level that way that socket would stay exactly in the spot that it was and not rolling back right so we used we used gravity <laughs> and things that don't lie gravity and circles, circles. geometry <laughs> you know just simple stuff the socket was rolling on the wood Starting on this end, it was rolling down. That meant that the back side wasn't quite level. And Bridget actually was the one that came up with the socket idea. <laughs> Pretty smart. I'm really, uh, I'm really pleased with that. So, what do you think, Bridget? I think that uh, it was a successful day. Yeah. Seats in uh, good shape, so to speak. Yep. Everything is uh, looking, looking on up. And the upholstery shop, Steve, down at Classic Custom Upholstery, showed us how to pull the seat apart. And they make aftermarket covers for these seats, so it's very easy to get them. The foam will rebuild. Steve, down there at the upholstery shop, will rebuild them. So we're just going to set the other seat in there and get the relationship set correctly, including the bench or the, the, the jump seat. And the steering column will be... Will be uh, We'll, we'll egress up into the dash and, uh, and then we'll just clean everything up and the rusty thing there I'll clean blast that get it all nice and uh, Bridget you've been been a big help come on out way to go so thank you Ed folks friends everybody out there be good be happy and be good to one another right Bridget exactly Bridget how long have we known each other Years, years. Thirteen. Years, yeah, I'll have, years, I'll have fries years. with that. Yeah. yeah, no fries with that. So, <laughs> anyways, folks, bye, Bridget. Bye. See you later. Have a good day, everybody. See you. Tschüss.